Hello, and welcome back to Astral Doorway. This episode was requested by Art Hearts 105 He asks, can you go over some meditation techniques? How do you enter a trance state? What does your meditation practice look like for entering the consciousness state required for astral projection? That's a great worded question, right? What does your meditation practice look like for entering the consciousness state required for astral projection? Because ultimately, astral projection is more about your state of consciousness rather than methods. It's about enveloping the mindset that will allow us to experience other realities rather than holding on to our usual physical limited one. Trance state is a common theme in shamanism and it's a difficult one to talk about because we have to first ask what is a trance state and what do we mean by it? Actually, we only call trance states trance states because it's so different to our usual state. But in reality, the trance state we want to achieve for astral projection is by getting out of our normal state, which actually is a trance state. The quote-unquote normal state of collective consciousness is a trance state. This is the first thing you have to understand. Our usual egoic, dreamlike, unconscious state is a trance state. You see where I'm going? When we first begin on the path, we are hypnotized beings who are all in our own unique subjective trance states. This is the first step towards realizing deeper states of consciousness. So any practice of getting into a trance state is really just going back to our more authentic type of trance state. In other words, the state of our soul. And depending on the type of person who goes into these states, they're either going to say, I felt more clear or I felt more unclear. Because it depends if the person can handle being without an ego who wants to explain everything. When you awaken out of your own trance state, you start to lose the rational, logical mind. And if you can't gravitate and rely on your intuitive and instinctive mind of the heart and of the body, then you're going to feel like you're going crazy, right? So you need to center your consciousness and be comfortable without the ego, without analyzing, without thinking. So every time we sit down to meditate, it should be with the intention of dying, right? Not physically, of course, but internally, to have the courage to let go and surrender our usual trance of ordinary life in order to make space for something new, something beautiful and spontaneous, whatever it may be, just like how in nature everything happens without turmoil or complaining and beautiful flowers blossom in the garden. And all you have to do is just allow it to happen. The important thing is not to try to get to a particular state. You can't try to take a flower out of its seed, right? You need to be open and wait patiently for other states to arrive naturally. My personal practice and routine can look like anywhere from no meditation at all if I'm super busy in my material life to when I'm on my best form and life allows a time, it can be up to three times a day. That is in the morning when I wake up because when we wake up in the morning, we've usually gone to all sorts of places during the night unconsciously and we need to really recenter ourselves. That feeling of when you wake up and you're disorientated is because you've been to all sorts of places. So yes, my three times a day when I'm on my best form is in the morning, before bed, and during a wake back to bed, so in the middle of my sleep cycle. 
every time I do this, it is about coming back to myself, back to my body, reclaiming wherever my energies are going. Because even throughout the day, we are thinking about all sorts of things, projecting our energies here and there, thinking about other people, what we have to do, etc. And this coming back, coming back is in a way conscious astral projection. Because when you become conscious or lucid in the non-physical, you are centering your consciousness back, back to where you are. And I think what's also important is to try to let go of the idea of meditation starts and meditation stops, right? It's definitely crucial to have that sort of formality, but we should also try to begin seeing life as one big meditation and try to be meditative in whatever we're doing, whether at work, speaking to friends, going for a walk in nature would be a good example, and also when reading profound spiritual texts. Meditation should imbue you with a sense of spiritual vitality. It's like turning on an inner ambient sound in the background of your life. Sometimes I'll set a meditation timer or sometimes I'll just meditate and go as deep as I instinctively feel and for as long as I instinctively feel I should. Sometimes it's just really about feeling what is right for you energetically in a balanced way. If you don't have that sense yet, then, you know, just ask yourself, are you meditating for long periods but feeling a lot of stress in your mind? Is your physical body tensing up? Because it shouldn't be, you know? Do not develop strong negative habits and associations with meditation. It should be balancing, restorative, blissful, and an enjoyable practice. It might not be all the time, of course, sure, especially when you first sit down for meditation, right? Because we've probably been thinking all day long about who knows what and in the subconscious mind too. But if you persist every time and really let go and allow your consciousness to envelop you, you'll come out of meditation in a better state every time, guaranteed. And it's not just about being in a better state, right? Everything about you on every level of your mind should be different. You'll make better choices and be more in touch with your emotions. You'll work better. You'll talk to family better. Everything will be better. Why? Because you gained clarity and centered your consciousness. And you're no longer living from a state of mind where your internal dialogue, your egoic voice is the forefront of your reality. Instead, consciousness and peaceful awareness becomes the forefront of your reality. And other people can feel that too, you know, whether consciously or subconsciously. With that said, there is an aspect of discipline and sometimes that can be uncomfortable, right? But who is it that's really uncomfortable? You, your divine essence or consciousness, or your poor little ego who's been told to be quiet, right? Uh, of course, we shouldn't quiet the ego through force or violence or self-hate. It needs to be done mindfully and peacefully and through intelligent psychological comprehension. That is, intuitively understanding the nature and feelings of your own ego. The main and most fundamental goal of meditation is reaching a state of nothingness within. It is a void. We don't do this by becoming. It's actually more like an unbecoming. It is a state of consciousness where your thoughts, emotions, the ideas of who you are cease to exist and only pure consciousness floods the mind. You are no longer concerned about yourself, about your ego. You vanish and turn into dust temporarily. 
Pure consciousness has no identifications. It's not spiritual. It doesn't have a name. It doesn't have opinions, feelings. It just is. It is the unmanifested. It is a place where all things are created from. Your creative force needs this unmanifested space in order to create more efficiently and from a place where your true purpose in life comes from. These glimpses of these states of consciousness is closer to the reality of God than any description in any text. The direct experience of it is far closer than anything you can imagine or think of because it is beyond the mind. Now, keep in mind, I don't always just meditate with the goal of reaching that void of silence and space within. Sometimes, especially if I've had a bad day, or I did, or said something, or reacted in a way that was in resistance with my experience, then later on I will meditate on that without judgment or emotions, and just simply meditate on what I did. I will meditate on that particular egoic aspect within me and through pure and clear awareness I will seek to recognize it and understand it deeply. Through doing this I am working on my own darkness, my own demons so to speak, so that I can integrate them and eventually transcend them so that in the future they won't disturb my inner peace throughout the day and my continued meditation of life, as I mentioned earlier. You know, because a meditation should eventually have lasting effects on your consciousness as you spiritually evolve and grow. A lot of people are very impatient with meditation and don't understand the benefits. That's because the benefits come after time. If you're a consistent meditator for years, spiritual growth and maturity is inevitable for you and you'll clearly see benefits. And for some who don't meditate, you can clearly see how some people, not all, uh, never grow up. Like I'm sure many of you know some people from school, right? And you've met them 10 years later and they're still the same. Uh, At a base level, they're the same spiritually, uh, as in a type of immaturity that's negative, right? You know, I like to be immature sometimes in a playful and fun, lighthearted way, but that's different to what I'm talking about. I'm talking about an immaturity that isn't pleasant because this person has not matured in a pleasant way. Uh, If you know what I'm talking about, you'll understand. So why do some people never grow up? Why are there so many 14-year-old men in 40-year-old bodies? If you have enough life experience, you'll know what I'm talking about. This happens because they simply haven't been paying attention throughout their lives. Meditation is also about being receptive to the ebb and flow and karmic lessons and energies throughout our lives. If you don't pay attention to them and learn from yourself and listen to that silent inner guidance, then no progress can be made. You won't learn. And guess what? If such a person tries to astral project, and wants to get help from higher beings in higher dimensions, then those beings will see that you're simply not ready and frankly won't help. And if the person is persistent in asking for help, then sure, they may give you a chance, or more likely they'll test you throughout your waking life. Um, They'll probably put some form of temptation in you to become uh, extremely lustful or extremely angry or there'll be some sort of test and, you know, they'll see if you're really, truly, spiritually ready. Whether you're lost in the material world or you're actually seriously gravitating towards a more spiritual comprehension of life. You know, there's a lot of sacred temples in the astral with teachers inside. 
they're not going to let you in if you're a stinky, <laughs> rude, angry, immature, or argumentative person, right? As above, so below. The physical plane is our foundation where we build our character and our soul. And we should act and live by the way we want to be seen in the astral too. You don't need to be some perfect angel, no, but you need to at least have a level of sincerity and humility to be able to acknowledge your flaws and know what you need to work on. If you know what you need to work on, if you can see the path before you because you understand yourself, then you'll know what you need to learn next and you'll ask the right questions to these higher forces in the superior dimensions of nature. So when you meditate and you try to keep your new states of consciousness until the next time you meditate, you'll see that when you try to do this, there will be challenges in trying to maintain this state. Now this is fine, don't resist it. Keep in mind that if you didn't meditate, you would be like this anyway. The only difference here is now that you're seeing your own usual low forms of states of consciousness more clearly after meditation. So it's not that you're actually becoming more egoic, it's just that the ego is in clear sight under your magnifying glass of your third eye, right? So to speak. Uh, so be careful how you react and how you treat yourself. So this is what happens when you see your usual ordinary self after meditation. It becomes sort of amplified and you may feel a shock or anger or surprise at your lack of ability to maintain your desired states of consciousness. Do not resist this. All that is required is awareness. You only simply need to allow yourself to be aware without judgment. And as you persist with daily meditation, you'll start to grow and learn about yourself naturally. What you become aware of, you have the chance to accept. And what you accept, you go beyond. Now, some things may be very disturbing to you if they are as part of your meditation. When you reach that void within and clear thinking, you can reflect on what happened and simply meditate with pure awareness from this higher state of consciousness. Not much you need to do here, just replay the scenes of what you did or felt without judgment and just observe. This is how we transform ourselves. This is how we change. You know how some people say, some people never change? Well, yeah, they don't because they don't have awareness. You can't change what you're not aware of. And through this observation and awareness through life, understanding will come your way spontaneously. This sort of technique can apply to absolutely any problems or obstacles that we have in life, whether it's laziness, anger, lust, wanting things, issues with family or friends, something to do with your business, or you want to find out why you can't astral project. Meditation applies to everything and anything. It is to access a clear light about any subject within ourselves, which helps us to see and proceed correctly, in the correct way, right? The word sin means to miss the target, right? It means to make a mistake. So meditation helps us to be on target, be correct, proceed the right way. And we do that through becoming more in tune with our own being and our own feelings. And this is the best way to solve problems in your life. This is the best way to get a grip of them and handle them. Problems are never solved from the ego. And if they are, they're never solved totally. We have to go beyond the ego to find the precise and ultimate solutions, which come to us by grace when we allow them to come. 
don't underestimate yourself. You are an intelligent being who can figure out your life if you just have faith in yourself. So another interesting insight, and which I don't think is realized often, is that when you reach this state of bliss, no thought, inner silence, uh, samadhi, which is a term in Buddhism which you can look up, I'll leave some links below, Uh, when you feel this void profoundly, it is actually a very high level of consciousness. It's much higher than the level of consciousness of the astral plane. The astral plane is reflective of the fifth dimensional level of consciousness or reality. However, in deep and profound meditation, where you enter the void of formlessness, you connect with the parts of yourself which are of the sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth dimensions of reality. And so after meditation, it's natural for us to magnetize back downwards in these dimensions, right? But because trying to connect to the higher dimensions and trying to live there as much as we can, you know, being the best version of yourself as you can, gives us more opportunity to fall back to at least the fifth dimension where the astral plane is. This is how profound meditation can help us astral project naturally. Because if we intend to go to the high dimensions rather than just the astral, where don't forget there's a lot of suffering in the astral still, uh, we will innately comprehend the astral, right? We as third dimensional beings have basically full comprehension of the first dimension and the second dimension, and we have a good understanding of the fourth dimension, which is of time. Um, But the fifth dimension is something a little harder to understand, but we can actually take a leap of understanding by reaching these voids within, because the void, the unmanifested, is superior to the fifth dimension. The astral manifests from that void. So if you can just keep going towards that void of these higher dimensions in meditation, natural intelligence will come your way. Natural comprehension will come your way. This is a type of learning that is not through intellectually analyzing books and science, etc. No, this is something that comes from within. Uh, And this is why I always meditate before bed. I connect with those higher states and realms of energy. And then it's a lot more likely for me to have profound experiences. And sometimes they aren't just in the astral plane, but I'm consciously out of body in this space or void. It's indescribable. It's without form. It's something transcendentally energetic. And when I come back to the body, the energy feels deeply rejuvenating and healing. I'll do more guided meditations on the channel. I already made one if you're interested. I'll put that on the screen now. Uh, But for now, you know, I could explain how to go into these deeper states of consciousness. But what better way to do it than a little guided meditation, which I'll do now. At the end of the video, I'll just stop the video and won't say any more. There won't be any bells or anything like that, no music. Uh, Let's just have a little silent meditation. And so if you want to continue meditating after I have finished guiding you, then please do so. Uh, If you don't want to meditate now, then I've left timestamps in the description below so that you can come back to the video and start the guided meditation from there. So let's do a meditation. Oh, and before I start, if you're not part of our Patreon group, which comes with a private Discord server, uh, consider joining as I do live guided meditations there as well, especially if you enjoy this one. The information for that will be in the description below. So this meditation will be based on the very first exercise that I give in my book, which is on page 48 called Exercise 1, Centering Consciousness. This is a basic but important way to regain our conscious awareness, to reclaim it. 
And suppose you do this before sleep for an extended period of time every day. In that case, I almost guarantee you will notice exciting improvements in your dream's vividness and content, uh, assuming that you've also trained yourself to remember your dreams by recording them every morning. Oh, and if you have the YouTube autoplay feature on, I suggest turning that off. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's on the screen now. Just simply click it to turn it off. Uh, because if you want to continue meditating afterwards, after the video has finished, uh, you don't want another video playing and interrupting you. So make sure you're in a comfortable position. Close your eyes and take a deep breath. Most people inhale into their shoulders. Be mindful of where you're breathing into. You need to learn how to breathe deeper. So inhale relaxation into your stomach and exhale with feelings of peace and surrender. Repeat this as many times as you like. Open your eyes softly for a moment and look in front of you and slowly acknowledge the objects in front of you in this present moment. Exercise appreciation of your surroundings. It could be anything. The beauty of an object, sunlight coming through your window, flowers, a picture, or simply the fact that you're alive and experiencing the wonderful and mystical experience that is life, which is refreshing to see when we no longer narrate a story over our life, or assume that you've seen it all before. Realize that every moment is a new experience. You've never been where you are now at this point in your life. You are totally in a new place. Every moment is new. Die to every moment. Surrender. Now become aware of your labeling of objects and don't focus any more on specific objects. Simply take in the visual experience as a whole, like a baby would. Now slowly turn your head left and right, acknowledging where you are without labeling, without judgments, without opinions. We'll continue deeper now, but when the meditation is over, try to maintain this no thought state of appreciation throughout your day. If you can, it will make vast improvements to your health, quality of life, and astral projection practice. Now close your eyes slowly again and do the same practice with sounds. Don't listen to any particular sound, but listen to the soundtrack of life, so to speak. Neutral, detached, and not liking or disliking any particular sound. 
Become aware of the space. Become aware of the space within your ears where you receive sound. While doing this, continue to breathe and become the observer of your breath. Then allow the breath to continue in its automatic, natural cycle. But maintain your ever watching awareness of the breath. Notice how it naturally goes in and out without any conscious effort or control at all. Get in tune with the rhythm of your breath. with the rhythm of life. Now ask yourself, what am I thinking? Do not go too deeply or forcefully into your thoughts. Stay in detached, impartial, objective, non-judging awareness. See every thought in front of you as little scenes inside bubbles floating around your awareness. Realize deeply that you are not these thoughts. You are the awareness of the thoughts. Ask yourself again, what am I thinking? Do not reply to yourself. Do not answer anything with words. Just ask the question and breathe and see, and hear, and feel in this moment. Now ask yourself, how am I feeling? And expand your awareness to your body, particularly your heart area. Keep a soft focus still on your breath, simultaneously. Feel how the cold air comes into your lungs and calms your heart. And how the exhale warms your heart. And ask yourself again, As you breathe in, how am I feeling? Just say it mentally as you inhale. Don't answer, only feel. Are you waiting for the next moment? Waiting results from this meditation? Are you waiting for a more profound state of consciousness? Are you bored? Those are all just forms in your mind. Connect with the formless the unmanifested, the place of no questions. 
of no anticipation, of no expectation. Feel yourself going deeper and more still now. Feel your ability to let go of your ordinary worldly thoughts. Let go of any moods or restlessness that you feel in your body. Become still. Only be. Continue to breathe in this clearer and calmer state of consciousness. Watch the breath as it goes in and out naturally without control. Surrender control and allow your body to do its job. Say to yourself mentally, I am not the body. I am not the mind. Continue to observe the breath. How long can you continually place your awareness on your breath without a distracting thought coming in? Five seconds, 30 seconds, 60 seconds. Every time a thought comes in, simply go back to the breath. It doesn't matter if you got lost in a thought for some time. Once you realize you did this, simply go back to the breath. The longer we can observe the breath continuously, paying attention to every detail without being distracted, is how we develop strong focus, intention, and profound inner concentration. If you can do this for 20 minutes or 30 minutes a day without fail, new states of consciousness will arrive naturally and spontaneously by grace. So, continue observing the breath. It is that simple. That is all that is needed. Stay with the breath. As you become calmer, and more still. The breath may become more shallow and slow. Just stay in the body, in the void, in the expansion of space. You are pure awareness, pure consciousness. Stay with the breath.